हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट स्टार्ट स्टडिंग अबाउट द न्यू यूनिट एंड द न्यू टर्म विच इज सेमी कंडक्टर नाउ एज वी हैव मेंशन दैट दिस सेकंड लास्ट यूनिट सॉलिड्स एंड सेमी कंडक्टर्स विच इज दैट प्रॉपर्टी और व्हाट इज दैट प्रॉपर्टी विच डिफरेंशिएट्स कंडक्टर्स फ्रॉम इंसुलेटर्स सी आई कैन ब्रॉडली क्लासिफाइड सॉलिड्स इनटू टू पार्ट्स राइट वन कुड बी कंडक्टर्स एंड अनदर वन कुड बी इंसुलेटर्स आई एम आस्किंग यू व्हाट इज दैट इंट्रेंसिक प्रॉपर्टी विच सेपरेट्स कंडक्टर्स फ्रॉम इंसुलेटर्स you must be guessing that the conductors conduct electricity insulators do not but why what does insulator do, doesn't have which in conductors have for example even conductors and insulators are made up of basic atomic structure or atoms or molecule right so why conductors conduct but insulators don't what is the difference the difference is the presence of free electrons now what is a free electron or conduction electron i have mentioned this term again or before when we were studying current electricity that free electrons are those electrons which jump from the valence shell and get out in from the vicinity of atom and they are free to move in interstitial voids and now they can drift anywhere in the voids in the presence of electric field so those free electrons actually constitute conduction electrons and that is why current flows current is what flow of charge so what is why conductors have free electrons why insulators don't to understand this we are going to study a topic called energy band diagram now energy band diagram why do we need to study that thing that is because we have a very small point see suppose there is a atom in which there are six valence electrons so that makes valency 2 now out of those six electrons one electron gained energy and jumped out of the atom so that one electron is now conduction electron because it is going to constitute current it can move anywhere in the void but what about those five electrons left in the valence shell see the atomic stability is at stake now because the atom which was constituting six valence electrons are now is now having only five valence electrons so there is a fact that valence electrons are shared by more than one atoms when the solid is actually constituted and this facts give rise give study to the energy band diagram let's study it so the first topic of the chapter would be energy band diagram for this we are going to take an example of silicon because later on we are going to declare silicon that this belongs to the category of semiconductors and we have to study detailed about semiconductor only so silicon has an atomic number of 14 so what would be the configuration i'm talking about electronic configuration exactly the chemistry one this would be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 and 3p2 right 6 7 8 9 10 plus 4 14 this would be the configuration of silicon now on this side i'm drawing the energy level this would be in electron volts and on this side we have interatomic separation x okay this is interatomic distance so when atoms are brought very close that is when a solid is actually formed consider this cap the atom of this cap are very strongly bonded and they are very close to each other so let us say that distance is represented here and this distance would be that no two atoms in a solid are actually at zero distance so there will be a minimum interatomic separation which will be present in all the solids you can see so now what we are doing we have taken an electron or an atom one atom from this cap outside what i am doing i am bringing this atom close to the whole group whole lot and we are going to study about what are the changes in energy levels of these shells so that we can figure out what exactly went into change okay so this side i am drawing 1s 2s 2p 3s 3p okay this is my 1s 2s 2p 3s 3p now these values correspond to some discrete values of energy now how is that studied see these electrons these two electrons in s shell are in s because they have definite energy which belongs to s only for example if they have would have a bit more energy they would be in p or if they would have had some less energy they would have been present in this p right so the energy decides energy of any corresponding electron decides it has to be located in s p or the lower shells because these shells represent the energy of electrons right 
this one is clear so we are going to revise some basic concepts of chemistry that is when electron gains energy it shifts to higher orbits higher revolving orbits or higher energy levels when it loses energy it jumps back to lower energy levels right so for a valence electron consider what would be the valency of silicon here 4 that is 2 from 3s and 2 from 3p so these electrons these are valence electrons and they can actually jump out of the atom and they'll be free which will be called conduction electrons so when we are bringing an atom close to the solid or the group of other atoms what is happening the the lower energy levels don't undergo any change but the higher energy levels start splitting up okay so there will be a point when the energy level will start splitting up of the outermost shell now what is what does this mean see these two 3s and 3p2 these four electrons when they were when the silicon atom was bring was brought in contact or in close vicinity with rest of the lot what happened this atom or these outermost electrons they gained energy due to mutual interaction and they got aggravated or they got in higher energy disturbance state so they start vibrating initially they had a fixed level of energy but now they are vibrating with what let's take it with let's let me explain with this example Suppose right now they have an uh, energy of 0.8 electron volt. I'm just giving you a vague figure and this is just an example. 0.8 electron volt for 3p and 0.6 electron volt for 3s. Now the 0.8 electron volt of 3p is vibrating with 0.7 to 0.9. So how would I show that in energy level diagram? I have to mark different energy levels, right? So instead of marking different energy levels, we have splitted the outermost shell. And when the atom will be brought more closer, the energy gap between these two, this energy gap, will completely vanish. And you won't find any difference between 3s and 3p energy levels electron. When the atom is brought more closer, inner, the innermost atomic, innermost shells or the these energy levels remain intact till the end. But outermost electrons, that is here, what is happening here? See. How many energy levels are present in P? There were 6 and in S, 2. So total there are 8 N energy levels. But out of 8 N, right now what we are seeing is there are 4 N filled energy levels and 4 N empty energy levels. So we cannot differentiate between which electron belongs to 3S or 3P. All we can say is in this broad energy gap or broad energy level, there are 4 N filled levels and 4 N empty levels, but we cannot differentiate between which electron belongs to 3S or 3P. And this happened because the electrons got excited. They are vibrating with different levels of energy. And that is why the energy gap between these two shells completely vanished. When this atom is brought more closer to the space or the, to the remaining atoms of that constituting solid, what will happen? The 4N filled will com get completely separated from 4N empty. And this type of band formation will take place. So this is completely empty part that is 4N empty levels and this is completely filled part. This is called this part or this band. This band is called valence band and this band is called conduction band. So conduction band is what? It is that state of an electron when electron actually jumps out of the valence shell and it now starts moving in the interstomic interstitial voids and now this that will be called a conduction electrons right so presence of electron in conduction band validates the electrical conductivity of any solid so conduction band valence band and these two bands got separated by some energy gap called eg this is energy gap so this is what we have studied about atom this would be let's mark this thing like D, C, B and A. So this is A is the actual interatomic inter separation. So this is how you can uh, define or explain the whole process in terms of points that when inter the when interatomic separation was D, there is no change in energy level of any electron. When it is decreased to C, innermost shells remain intact but outermost shells got splitted up because the the electrons of the outermost shells got excited and they started vibrating in different energy levels so instead of defining it in discrete energy levels we have splitted the 
3p and 3s energy levels at b point the gap between 3p and 3s which gap the energy gap completely diminishes and we can say that instead of 8 and levels instead of 4 and filled and 4 and empty levels there are 8 and different sets of energy level out of which 4 and are filled 4 and are empty but we cannot differentiate between which electrons belongs to what and finally when atom is taken to actual interatomic spacing that is a the completely filled level gets separated from completely empty level and that is called energy gap so these are the points on the basis of which you have to explain this energy band diagram and the energy band diagram actually explains us the concept of conductivity in terms of solids let let's go further